Huh, this thermostat housing looks a little crummy. I think we should replace it. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are going to be doing a thermostat video. So, of course, we're gonna go ahead and take off this thermostat housing. We're gonna be replacing the coolant temperature sensor. We're gonna put a new thermostat in, a new gasket, and button this thing back up with a nice and new part. So, let's get to it. All right, guys, so here is our thermostat. It is nice and exposed since I have the whole front of this XJ off, so it's a no-brainer to replace it. Come to think of it, I should probably replace the water pump. Uh, I don't know, I might even have a water pump somewhere. That's a whole other issue. Uh, if your XJ is together, like Black Beauty is, then you can see here you're going to have to finagle around this, this fan shroud. Um, you'll have to take it off, maybe. Um up to you you might be able to work around it but um anyway you got these clips here you're gonna have to take off your upper radiator hose and this what is this this is the hose that goes to your heater core so heater core hose there once your hoses are off you just pinch and pull your plug might have that little red lock on it this is long gone before you remove the housing you're going to want to go ahead and remove this temperature sensor it's a 19 millimeter it slides right over the connector Give this baby a nice little tug. There we go. We'll get this sucker out. Look at this. This looks pretty new. We're going to reuse this bad boy. Set it to the side. Now we can take off bolts Uno and Dos. Uno and Dos are both 13 millimeter. Man, this is coming out very easy. And we're gonna have a long one at top. And the short one on the bottom. All right, now she ought to just kind of pop on out. There we go. Nice and grimy in here, as expected. Here is our old gasket. Yucky. And here is a thermostat sucked right in here. Notice the orientation. We got the spring side inward. And this has a nice good seal against this head. And then the gasket goes over top. So we'll remember how all this goes together when we put the new one in. All right, pop your safety glasses on. You can affix a wire brush to your drill. I'm gonna clean up this mating surface. That's also a pretty good time for an engine flush. All right, guys, it's that time of year where the sun is dropping like a greasy bowling ball. So we got the work light set up. Here's what else we got. Let's see, we got some brake clean, a rag, some Permatex gasket maker. We got our new 195 thermostat, our new housing. Looking good. Look at that surface area. It is shining. New gasket, of course. And here's the old one. Looking nasty. It doesn't mean we can't use this in the future one day. I'll just put this in a pile of parts. For $10, I couldn't resist getting a new Dorman one. Not bad at all. So all right, we're gonna go ahead and clean up this mounting surface and then start the process of installation. All right, got our brake clean. So we're just gonna spray this down. Got a nice clean surface going on. I'm gonna wipe down the surface. Get all that grease and nastiness off. Yucky, yucky. I'll make another pass. And what you want to do is you want to wipe this and not see any black or grossness. That's pretty good. One more wipe. There. Pretty good. 
All right, here we go. We're gonna start with our thermostat. This is a 195 thermostat. I think it says it right on here. I should say it on the core somewhere. There it is, 91 degrees Celsius, 195 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is the temperature we want for our XJ. It is the OEM spec for this four liter. And you don't want to change that. If your XJ is running hot, don't change the thermostat. Fix the problem that's causing it to run hot. So this thermostat has a little hole. We're gonna put this hole top dead center. I think this is for letting air bubbles pass through. Sometimes they have a little thing that makes your air bubbles jiggle, breaks them up. <laughs> this one doesn't have that. Uh, if you don't have a hole, you could always put a little tiny one eighth hole at the top. Um, no big deal. It's gonna let some air pass through. Um, this has a little notch on the side. This will let coolant and air pass through, but I think it's better if there's something at the top because air rises. So I don't know. That's, uh, that's what I do. And this one has a hole, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in. All right, gonna open up this Permatex. I never use this nozzle, it gets in the way. This stuff's hard to squeeze out as it is. All right, take our lid, puncture this open. I'm gonna take just a little, little bit, very, very tiny bit. I'm just gonna run it around this inner rim right here. Take some brake clean on a rag. I'm gonna wipe down this surface here. There we go. Get the seated nice and flush in that groove. Put that little hole right at the top. Stick that baby on. Now it's gasket time. You're gonna want to figure out the orientation. This little hole goes right up over there. Lines up with these two holes. Very nice. So this is a paper gasket. Now, what I like to do is make an even better seal with more of this Permatex gasket maker. A little bit of this on the gasket, make it nice and even and smooth, not thick at all. Just wanna use it as like a little bit of a glue. Just sticking it on there, very thin. This is probably way too much, but I don't want anything leaking, so whatever. <laughs> go that whole thing <laughs> was half the size of a dime and I only used about half of it on so let's flip this I'm gonna go line this up there we go mush that on wipe our hands clean with the rag and then we'll go ahead and we'll clean up this surface a little brake clean nice clean wipe down let it dry a minute. And once again, just a very small dollop on the old booger hook right there. And do a thin, thin layer right around the edge. Now, again, you want this to have a good seal. So, if you see any factory burrs around the edges, might be a good idea to just gently sand them down, maybe 400 grit sandpaper, take care of any lips or rough edges that protrude and would prevent uh, a, even a flat seal. So there we go, nice smooth layer right there. Now before you go ahead and put this on, you wanna make sure that thermostat is in there nice and secure. If the thermostat comes out of its little housing spot, and slides down it won't seal correctly and you'll have a leak and that would be bad okay so here we go we got our bolts again these threads look really clean normally i'd run them with the wire wheel like i did this whole thing but uh <laughs> again this looks pretty fantastic so just gonna line up the top hole line up the bottom hole Wiggle and turn, wiggle and turn. There we go. That's how you don't cross thread it. All right. Wiggle and turn. Get the bottom one in. There we go. 
Now I'm not going to tighten this, not just yet, but I'm just going to give it a half a turn, just so uh, so I know everything's making contact. There we go. And I'm going to give this about an hour. Let the gasket maker firm up a little bit, make its little seal, and I'll crank this down. What the heck? Ah. While I was waiting for my gasket to firm up, I went ahead and I tightened up some of these rogue valve cover bolts that kind of worked themselves loose. And then I went ahead and I removed the dipstick so I could pull out the stuck dipstick that had the head broken off. And then I went ahead and reinstalled it and replaced it with a new dipstick. All right, here we go, 13 millimeter. And I'm just gonna crank down each bolt little by little, making sure that seals up nice and even and you don't really have to go too hard guys it uh it should be on there nice and flush with two layers of gasket maker and a nice paper gasket i think that's it not too tight there we go all right here is our temperature sensor i went ahead and i wrapped this with some teflon tape I have the gray stuff somewhere, but of course I couldn't find it. So when you wrap it, you just want to make sure that it is going in the direction that you spin this thing so it doesn't unravel in the threads. So here we go. We're going to wiggle and turn. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. There we go. We'll get this sucker on as much as we can by hand. And that's about it. And we'll do the rest with our 19 millimeter. We're not going to go too hard, don't want to snap anything off. That feels good right about there, nice and snug. And we'll reconnect our connector. And last but not least, the hoses. And last but not least, the hoses. All right guys, I am blinded by the light. Oh. Horrible song reference. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to be a wrap for this thermostat housing on this Jeep Cherokee XJ. If you want, I will leave a link in the description below to all the parts and products that I used. And I'm really getting blind right now. Uh, that's going to be a wrap. Thank you for following along with the rebuild of Rec J, aka Resurrect J. And uh, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the rest of this build. And uh, that's it, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next project. Peace.